Our next speaker is Dr. Rajib Raj Hazra, and he's CEO of Continuum, and has more than three decades of experience in supercomputing and quantum technical roles all around the world. Prior to joining Continuum, he served as the general manager of the compute and networking business unit at Micron Technologies, and he spent 25 years at Intel Corporation, leading the enterprise and government group, technical computing group, the supercomputing architecture and planning, and systems technology research. Prior to Intel, in 1995, he was with Lockheed Corporation, and he was based at NASA's Langley Research Center, and he prides himself on building high-performing teams with a growth mindset and a culture of truth and transparency. Quantinium is one of the platinum sponsors making this event possible, and with that, would you please welcome uh, Raj to the stage. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I hope I don't, you understand why I don't stand behind a podium. Um, it's my first time at the uh, Quantum World Congress, and it, it's great to make some new friends, lots of new friends, but it's also very good to see some old friends from the HPC and supercomputing communities uh, now be part of this hybrid journey of quantum, AI, and HPC. Today, we, I'm going to talk a little bit about the main focus and passion that we have at Continuum, which is bringing the future in. Uh, the roadmap to a universal, fully fault-tolerant quantum computing. The, nothing could be more exciting <laughs> like the time we are in in the quantum industry today. But we have all different routes and paths to this holy grail of being able to serve the use cases waiting for the for the power of quantum computing, useful and usable power uh, quantum computing. I sometimes claim I have the best seat in the house. I have the best seat in the house being part of the Continuum team. We are a leader in quantum computing. In case for those that are just saying, who is Continuum? Uh, we've been around for, uh, as Continuum, since uh, November of 2021, but our lineage goes way back to about a decade or longer uh, as part of Honeywell Quantum Solutions that built the hardware and Cambridge Quantum Systems, a leader uh, in quantum software and algorithms. So bringing the two leaders in, uh, we've got 350 plus of the world's best talent, uh, scientists and engineers, all the way from hardware to algorithms, uh, and we have a growing presence worldwide uh, in the US, in UK, Germany, Japan, and rapidly expanding to, to quantum hot zones, as I call them, in places like Singapore. I would say we're the undisputed leader today, and I know that's a big, bold claim to make. So um, being data-driven and, and always providing proof for what we do uh, as our culture, I'll talk a little bit about what makes us undisputedly leading with a sense, a deep sense of responsibility to continue uh, to innovate in this industry and take the industry and the ecosystem forward. What you'll see on the first row is what we've been doing for the last 10 plus years, building the world's highest performing quantum computers, demonstrating increasingly improving fidelities up to three nines on our commercial systems today, and and, and performing record-breaking feats on industry benchmarks like quantum volume, where we've achieved two to the power 21 on our latest generation H256 qubit machine. Well, that's just hardware, speeds and feeds. Uh, what are we doing beyond that? The second row talks uh, about our work to take these kinds of uh, physical capabilities and bring resilience and fault tolerance into, uh, into the fold, rapidly improving the usability and the usefulness and the value, the utility of these computers. With Microsoft, we demonstrated recently 800x, the largest gap between physical and logical error rates with active syndrome uh, extraction. This is a huge, huge feat for the first time. And if you think 
as you should, that this was stunning, uh, wait for the next keynote, uh, which Microsoft will present themselves. We also looked at uh, the RCS, or the Random Circuit Sampling Benchmark, uh, and you know this was made a little popular by Google in 2019, associated with, with the word computer supremacy. Uh, we don't care whether it's supremacy or not. What we did was we performed 100x better on that same benchmark with our system. In doing so, we also discovered and, and proved that to do the same thing, to prove the quantumness of, of, of the benchmark, which is what it essentially does, uh, we, we consumed 30,000 times less energy compared to what a supercomputer would have to be and would have to consume in order to do that same benchmark. Why do I mention this? A lot of people think quantum computing is just about doing things faster, like an accelerator. True, in many cases that might be true. But it is also true that when we look at the growing needs of AI and the challenges it puts on things like sustainability, uh, as these data centers start resembling little nuclear power plants, uh, that the, the energy benefits, the resource efficiency that quantum computing can drive in is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And the last row is all about continuing that rate and pace of innovation forward, looking at more and more sophisticated error correction in a single shot with 4D codes, solving the scaling problems that typically have been touted as what could halt the progress towards fully fault-tolerant uh, universal quantum computing at scale uh, with what's called the widening problem, and I'll talk about that later. But that's just technology. But that's just technology. What you'll see on the right-hand side is people, the leaders in their various end markets, whether it's financial, whether it's transportation, whether it's life sciences, whether it's chemistry, all working with us on real use cases and bringing them to life in their next form on quantum computing. Whether we're looking at new battery materials, whether we're looking at carbon sequestration with metal organic frameworks, whether we're looking at peptide binding for, for new kinds of drugs and pharma uh, explorations, wherever there is a value for quantum computing and companies that are at the forefront of leading that charge because they think it's a strategic advantage for their future, for their business, we are there. So they, these companies are putting their, their limited resources and focus and faith in working with us. And we are trusted by our strategic investors. At the end of the day, to accelerate this rate and pace of innovation requires capital. We are very proud that our strategic partners have conviction in our direction and technology, and they're putting their money to accelerate our collective quantum future. Over the past decade, we've had about 1.6 billion of capital, USD of capital invested to get us to this leadership point. And then most recently, in January 2024, we completed a 300 million fundraise at a valuation of 5 billion. The valuation speaks to our strategic investors' belief of not just the opportunity of Y quantum, but also Y continuum. So enough about us. What do we do to deliver value? What is it we think is necessary in the ecosystem at this point? We deliver a full stack. We, and, and the two things that I will point out here is we don't just deliver our stack, right? We deliver a stack from hardware to middleware to developer toolkits to algorithms. We have experts in chemistry, in supply chain, in, in high energy physics. We, we take all of that and become a solution development platform for our customers, alleviating their complexity of finding multiple partners to fill the stack gap. The two things I will point out is we are very partnership oriented. So our software strategy is to be platform inclusive. Our software runs on more than our hardware. We let our hardware win on its own merits, but we don't write for our hardware. And so we have a tool like 
uh, ticket now with two plus million downloads widely being used to develop and optimize code on superconducting qubits, um, on multiple trapped ion qubits, on multiple, and, and now starting to be on neutral atom qubits as well. We also work with others to take the best of their innovations and make them run best on our hardware. And that is, again, an example around error correction. We have our own, but if someone comes up with something better or something more tuned to a particular algorithm, we have no constraints in our system that says you cannot use that. And again, if you want more details about this, stay tuned for the next keynote. So, the question is, we are building the world's most powerful, most useful quantum computers today. What's next? We believe that our mission, our responsibility, is to continue, not continue, to accelerate this track, leading with scale, with leading scale, the lowest error rates, and unparalleled customization. You, you've probably heard a lot about the first two. Let me talk a little bit about the third one. We don't think that the world of quantum algorithms, as they diversify, is going to be simply around a design point. Give me these many qubits with this error rate. There will be shallow circuits and deep, deeper circuits, and some of them will do well with full error correction, some won't. And so what we are building in our hardware plus software stack is the ability to customize to an increasingly diverse set of algorithmic, quantum algorithmic needs. And we think that is important to actually increase the utility of quantum computers and not get them niche to be domain or problem specific. It's both a technical point, but it's a fundamental economic point as well, because it pertains to the, the, you know, the basic serviceable available market for a company like us. So today, I'm introducing Apollo. Apollo is both a reality and a vision rolled together in one. In this decade, we will deliver a quantum computer that supports a universal gate set with fault-tolerant operations. That's what we call a fully fault-tolerant quantum computer. Using our QCCD, trapped ion architecture, which has these very critical features like all-to-all -all connectivity and mid-cycle measurement, we will deliver thousands of physical qubits at a, a two-qubit gate fidelity of 10 to the power minus four, hundreds of logical qubits delivering industry's best error rates, and I'll talk about that in a second, and a design space where you could trade off between the number of logical qubits and the fidelity or the error rates you need for the demands of the application, dynamically. We, we think this is a very, very important aspect of making a more general purpose quantum computer. This will be available no later than 2029. For many, this would have felt even a year ago, if you go out and read where we kind of get to this, this level of performance, uh, it would be in the 2030s. I want you to note that the, we can get, many people can claim hundreds or even thousands of logical qubits. It's really the error rate that then matters, right? Being able to go down and, and stay in the 10 to the power minus five to going up to 10 to the power minus 10, which we now see through the work of researchers and partners distinctly possible. And that is a tipping point. That is a tipping point for the industry. That is a tipping point for the use of quantum computing. And we believe what makes quantum computing come out of the promise and the hope into a, rea into a large scale reality for the market. Paving the path to Apollo, many people will say and have asked us, well, do you have all it, everything that it takes? My answer is yes, because in the generation of work we've done, we've now demonstrated that we can get to larger uh, number of physical qubits by solving the wiring and, and sorting problem. And we have engineering stats on things like scaling the traps and laser beam delivery. It's a little bit more interesting on the fault tolerant scale. You can always build machines that are more and more qubits a little bit more easily. And particularly working 
um, with making it universal, right? So I won't announce it today, but I will want you to watch the space of fault-tolerant universal gate set very, clear, very carefully. We obviously have Clifford gates done. We published that paper. Watch the space around non-Clifford gates in the next few months. And that's all I'll say at this point. Once we have both of those done, we are now well on our way to engineering Apollo. From here to Apollo is not just, you know, we have H1 and H2 today, and then there's a big promise and wait till 2029. What we are doing is we are putting two systems in that are not just development vehicles for Apollo, proving out the trap technologies, proving out the software, proving out the error correction, but are also very useful machines in their own right for software development and continue to accelerate the ecosystem around this kind of capability. The first system is available, it's called Helios, will be available in 20, uh, 25 June, so that's imminently around the corner, and will have 50 logical qubits with an error rate lower than 10 to the power minus four. Sol is the next one, keeping a two-year cadence. If you notice, everything from H2 is about on a two-year cadence. Um, we'll take that up to uh, about 100 logical qubits at an error rate of 10 to the power minus five. Now, now, it's not just the number of logical qubits, but it's an order of magnitude decrease in the error rate before we get to Apollo. So this represents, for the first time, our disclosure of a full roadmap, all the way out to 2029. And we are doing this because we are, we are looking for partnerships and the ecosystem to get their parts done and delivered in a way that we can bring a full capability uh, to bear in the Apollo timeframe, the tipping point timeframe. So our job, if you go up to our website, says it's accelerating quantum computing. And this era, the next three or four years, is going to be critical as many of us in the space that we are in will say, we are going to do this. The next three or four years will prove the habits versus the still aspiring. We know on which side we will want to be and we will be. So we've actually changed our company philosophy to include two additional words, accelerating universal, fully fault-tolerant quantum computing. That is our journey as a company. That is our collective journey as an industry. And we hope you're both excited and, and looking forward to your own part of the journey and working with us to even further accelerate it. Thank you. <laughs>